Uh, I think I know what it may be. Because I don't think Sid Meier's Railroads was actually designed for streaming, so I think that's why I'm getting the complications that I'm getting. Okay. Yeah, I think I see what's wrong. Is it actually going to let me play the game? Doesn't look like it. Oh, right, here we go. I will fair warn people, uh, this game is known for crashing uh, on occasion, so, you know, if it suddenly crashes and the stream stops, uh, you'll know why. It's through no meddling on my part. The game in question is known for having a few bugs and what have you. Um, some might be wondering, why do I keep coming back to this game? Not even I know. Uh, there's something quite... I don't want to say soothing, but there's something quite... Uh, well, there's something to be had from it. Let's leave it at that. Do, 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 do. Right, I suppose you should go through some of the objectives of the game. Um, no, that's not what I want to... I'm looking completely the wrong one. Ah, victories. You have certain milestones to get. So by 1850, you have to connect Liverpool and Manchester together and have 70% ownership of the company. And currently we're at 50 and then by 1922, you have to have Birmingham, Liverpool, London, and Manchester all connected. And by 1957, which they recall, they call the sunset of the Big Four. Now, for those that are not in the know, the Big Four in the United Kingdom from 19, the 1920s onwards until about 1948, because British railways were split into four groups so that it was just easier for them to manage. You'd have... LNER, which is the London Northeastern Railway, you'd have the Southern Railway, the LMS London Midland Scotland, that was the West Coast, and you have one that's probably uh, on equal pairing and probably most well known compared to LNER, LNER, and that was the Great Western Railway, or also known as GWR. And they came to an end in 1948 because after the Second World War, the railways were in absolute shambles of a state, so it's just easier just to have the government uh, nationalize them. So we're essentially like doing something that's, uh, I suppose, loosely historically accurate, if that makes any sense. Now let's get some... Yeah, I'm piling on a little bit of pressure for these small engines to be able to cope, but over time they get upgraded and you actually do see them perform better. Passengers are great with regards to um, revenue, but mail and freight, they take a lot more for it. And one thing they do encourage every once or so often, upgrade the stations from depots to stations and terminal because you can carry more and you get more passengers and revenue. So when this one comes back to this, um, it's going to take less time for it to load up and it can actually take more mail revenue, which is something I'm going to do here with the Cheltenham Depot. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Clock in. There we go. And watch what happens. The loading time is surprisingly less. Okay. Now I'm going to upgrade the engine. Because notice what he's doing here. He's doing about 6 miles an hour. Now he's doing up to 11. Let's see. 
So he's essentially doing twice the twice the speed that he was before, and as a result, it's less time between stations, and you know, quicker money you bring in. And watch this. Now, because Salisbury has a terminal, it's already the fastest that you can load and offload passengers and cargo. Now, if your train happens to break a speed record, you have things like this happen. So that's become the Salisbury Flyer, and you get things like this happen, with a little quick snapshot in sepia, sepia, whichever your preference, and your train gets a nickname as a result. Let's see, what this one? No, this one doesn't get a nickname, but the next time he gets upgraded, which hopefully won't be too long, um, that one will get the same treatment. It's just that this train would then take, would break that one's record and then move on. Let's see. Now, because he's able to, uh, I'm going to add a mail cart on there anyway. Only because, like I say, if you have uh, mail on there, you actually increase revenue. Granted, it takes longer for the engines to do so. Because, obviously, the more you stack onto a train, the harder and longer it's going to be for them. But the end results are worth it. And I think... I have the necessary amount of revenue to start extending the track. One thing I try to do with regards to gradient is try to keep it at no grade. Only for the simplest reason, you don't um, make it difficult for your for your trains, um, you know, to go uphill because that just adds on time, and that could be a detriment. Right, Let's pop that there, and you know, try to give your, you know, your trains as many stations that they can go to, but without um, taking too long. Let's see. Let's. See. Now, because that one's likely to get busy, I'm going to turn that into a terminal. Only because it does this weird thing on this game where it will have trains phase into each other, like you're about to see. Uh, and also, if, when you have like a patent come up for auction, buy it. Because if you happen to play uh, somebody online, or if you happen to be playing against a um, playing against the computer. You want to be competitive and actually snap up those patents so that you have more um, control hold over the uh, the industry that you're you know that you've now just entered. Okay, again, trying to keep the gradient at no grade because you know keeps things running smooth. Right, I've just connected another station. The other thing you're able to do is able to. Um, Put like stops at industry points so for example here we have Ipswich sheep farms and that takes um, the wool from sheeps and turns it into jumpers sweaters basically you know apparel at that point so you assign a train it'll pick up the necessary cargo from here take it from that station it has a factory there and turns it into product simple as What I'm also going to do here is, oh, I can't add, yeah. See, I could actually borrow from sh stock shares that I have, but you own 50% and then it would take you down and you've only got 11 years going at the current pace that it's going before you have to have 70% of the company before 1850. So, whilst I'm also working on that, I'm also going to start, let's see. Right, if we have, 
yeah, moderate uh, uphill. We don't mind moderate uphill because it's not it's not too taxing on the locomotives that way. All right, I need another sixteen grand. Okay, we now have a bridge. Right, where? All right, so that one takes coal, but it's not going to turn it into into uh, metal, which can then be in turn used to make weaponry. Okay. All right, haven't got uh, 50 grand. I do now. That's Manchester connected. That's Nottingham connected. And I'm going to get a train going there. So let's see. That's already, he's delivered his first load of wool. So what you see over time, if you've delivered you know, wool to that place, you'll then start to see manufacturers go up. So right there, you notice you know, the amount of uh, apparel or clothing has gone up by one item. So that could then go as, you know, as trade with various stations that require that. So for example, if I go to put one on there, Birmingham has a need for it, which I will do so in a little bit, but it would mean uh, making a few alterations there. And I'm going to add a line. So we get that done. I think I'm not going to have it cross over too much with that. So we can get a parallel track going. So when that one needs to go over, it can. So let's see. Here we go. Come on. Right, so I've now added a parallel track to that. So what has he got? He's got about three, so I'm going to... Because again, you have to consider how fast they're able to take this. That's doing surprisingly well. I'm actually going to have that go to Norwich as well. But take it down by two carriages because Norwich only has the capacity for four at this point. Now, hoping that one's going to go on the other side. I'm actually going to upgrade that to a terminal. Again, because watch how quickly it loads up. There we go. Now we're going to get the phase through again, you know. Now is it going to go down the left side or is it going to cross over? Yep, it's crossing over. Okay, uh, whilst we're there, let's upgrade that one and let's upgrade Manchester as well what I'm also going to do is add a second line because you know you need uh, you need mail moved so we've added that I've got about six years left on there well Five after these next two months before you know I need to uh, now things are gonna get interesting because I'm gonna you know in fact I'm gonna pause the game and I'm gonna upgrade all of them just so that you know not having to go around and stop them I can, upgrade them all individually so basically 
think of it in a way as uh, evolving your Pokemon. You know, they just upgrade to the next level. And now, unpause it. In him in particular, he's now going at a steady 49 miles an hour. He's just about to clock into Portsmouth. No, he didn't break the record that time. I'm also going to upgrade. Oh, someone did break the record at Nottingham Station. So if we go up there. Yep, Nottingham Special broke the record, but another train's about to come in. This is same distance. That one didn't break the record. That's interesting. I'm just now buying a share. So I now own 60% of the company. This one's just about to clock in. Again, that one. Right. And Rail Baron builds the business. So if I now go to look on victory screen, I've achieved one of those uh, milestone achievements. Call it what you will. I now own 70% of the company. But I now need an additional piece to complete this chapter. So if I connect Manchester with Liverpool, Liverpudlians and Mancunians alike rejoice. Now thousands of citizens can all be late at once, quips Mayor. I wonder if that's historically accurate. So there, our rockets and rain hill, I've completed two of the requirements. Connected Manchester and Liverpool, and I own 70% of the company. And there's another patent coming up, so yeah, I think I've got enough for that. I'm also going to add Liverpool to that. And I will do the same for the mail train. And by extension, I'm going to add on an extra extra two, re two mail carts. And I'm going to have a freight line connecting Manchester with Liverpool's sheep pastures. It's fairly... Just trying to get the gradient. No, it really does not want to... Uh... Hmm. That's very interesting. Is there any... Ah, nothing up there, so that's all right. Because what I'm trying to do is get the great... Ah, gentle uphill, I can work with that. Get rid of that, because that is no longer required. And I will now... Right, does that one... Yeah, that one requires medicine, so when that one is ready... I've added a third line so that it meets uh, capacity. Do, 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 do. Why am I hugging? I'm hugging? Why am I humming the uh, the jungle zone thing from Sonic 1 on the Game Gear? I don't know. Although there were a couple of episodes in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog where. No, it's actually one episode where they were actually. Um, it was actually very, you know, railway themed, so. You know, make of that what you will. And right, look at that, money is just flowing in now. I'm actually going to upgrade Liverpool because you know you want to, to be able for people to flow in and out with relative ease. Here we go. There we go. Okay, I'm actually going to buy the textile mill because you have the option to buy these industries at auction. And I'm essentially going to, like I say, own it. All right. Okay, which one? Oh, it took him long enough. 
so ah okay a couple of tracks on to that a lot easier do 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 I'm going to make things uh... the only thing I've noticed with the bridges is that they get altered a little in some way when you make subtle changes like that on the track. Some of it, sometimes it can be irritating, but you know, it's probably just the way uh, Sid Meier um, had it programmed uh, when he released this originally in 06. Right. Right, here we go. One of these, I think, let's see, oh, There's a method to what I'm doing with this, so do bear with me. Now, I'm going to upgrade Birmingham to having a terminal. Because that's going to allow for a lot of easier and quicker departures. Alright, do the same for Peterborough. This is where I've got to align this up again because I want no gradient. There we go. So I'm trying to achieve that here. Ah, hang on. Right. Get rid of that piece. Now, what I want to do. Um, that's another one I need to get. Again, I just I just prefer no gradient because it it just has a lot of less hassle. You know, because it just it just makes it easier on the on the uh, the locomotive to actually get up and down the hill. Okay, hang on. All right now, uh, let's. See. Wait a minute. No, I didn't think I had. Now this is where it may get a little bit on the pricey side, although I've got a million dollars in the bank. A uh, million pounds, excuse me. Yep. But that's depleted me somewhat. So, what we do now. I'm only going to have that go as far as just the near edge platform. 
So I want this to be able to connect. Now, where is the ending of that track? There we go. Okay. Right. Oh, now things are going to get interesting. Again, let's pause. Now what you're seeing, much faster freight engines. Right, what we want. Right, what does that one need? Uh, that one needs fish. Uh, still need to get that one connected somehow. Okay. Right, we're at 900. 970,000. Uh, can this connect up? Right. That's that line. Okay. That line's now connected. Let's see. Yeah, I want to somehow uh, see. Doesn't look like it's clashing too much, so yeah, it looks okay. There we go. Right, we've got a terminal at Lincoln. Whether we actually require one at Lincoln at the moment is debatable. But it's helpful just to have certain things set up in advance just so that, again, less of a headache. Now, how much are we short by? Good 406,000. Uh, let's see. Right, that's done. Um, well, we can now set that one up. Now, it currently doesn't have uh, anything set up there, but since the city's too small, I'm going to wait until that particular city starts to get larger just so that I'm able to start um, yeah, making things easier. Right. Uh, increase speed in tight turns. Yes. Right. Start to connect other cities now. Ah, my old neck of the woods. Right, no gradient, that's how we like it. I'm actually gonna save this one as a connection for London. Okay, let's see. Right. Right, this is where I'm going to try and not make the gradient too... Uh, right, that's where it could... Hmm. I'm actually going to go with this... Or oh, never mind. Oh, actually, no. Because that just looks too weird. And also because it produced such as a you know such a graphical error. See that's better. It just means I've got to have 
Um, connecting tracks up from there. So I have that there. Yeah. Because then it doesn't look so weird. Um, Okay, now this is not going to be. This is actually like the um, first central track, if that makes any sense. Come on, buddy. Get up to those numbers where I need you to be. No, I don't want the tunnel. Come on, move up. There we go. All right, another one connected. Um, I'm actually gonna wait a short while before I connect uh, London up with the rest. And there it goes, uh, it's crashed. Yeah, sorry folks, this happens on occasion. It's just the way uh, the game was engineered, but hope you did like um, how that game was played. Let me know if you'd like to see more. Until then, MJ Knight out.